Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of the world which would corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey Him as your Lord? Some of you probably recognize those questions as the questions we ask, churches all over the world ask, to someone who has chosen to be baptized. As we talk about worship, you can't talk about Christian worship for any length of time without discussing this thing we call baptism. And as I was thinking about that, and as we talked about different songs and things, I, I was thinking about my own life. When I was, when I was a kid growing up, um, we, this is going to make me sound older than I am, but um, we would baptize in the creek. Um, and if you're from Gallia County, you realize that's the appropriate way to say C-R-E-E-K. It is creek. Actually, we baptized usually in Raccoon Creek, which is... Sounds even more hillbilly. Um, and sometimes in a pond, sometimes... But I was thinking, I was talking to Steve about this. This One of the songs that was sung, uh, when we talked about baptism, was this song, Shall We Gather at the River? Which when I, read, when I sing the song now, I looked at the lyrics, it has nothing to do with baptism. But it was the song, and I, I, was, and I have that memory of baptism. And when I was a kid growing up, baptism was a, a massive event because we didn't have a thing inside the building. I mean, we, in, in order for you to have baptism, the entire church had to go somewhere else where there was some water to be baptized. Now, in my background, um, that meant that you had to be in, in uh, natural water and you had to get dunked. Um, and it didn't matter if it was January or July, you were going underwater and you might come up out with shock, but the Holy Spirit would get you through it. That was basically the idea behind it. Baptism is a huge part of the tradition and the faith of Christianity. If you read, you go, it doesn't take you long in the New Testament to read the words reflecting baptism. You know, remember, if you look at, at the early parts of, of all the Gospels, there's a story of, of a person named John the Baptist. That's why he was called the Baptist, because he liked to baptize who was calling out for repentance, calling people to change their lives, and as part of the, the demonstration of what they did, they would be baptized. They would, be, they would get wet. And it's important for us to know about John the baptizer because in that story, Jesus comes on the scene, and John tells them, the people who are listening, listen, I'm baptizing with water, but one day there's a guy coming who's going to baptize with something greater. And when Jesus shows up, he actually has himself, he allows himself to be baptized by John and takes up the mantle of this story, this message of the gospel and the good news. He becomes the living embodiment of that water as he goes through his life. And when he goes through and he, he lives a, a great life and and, and we, talk, we, we talk a lot about Jesus here, which is kind of appropriate, but we, um, we, he goes through his life and, and, and we see the, the, the perfect life he lived and the things that he taught and all of those types of things. And even in his death, um, he, he died and was, was, was murdered. He gave up his life willingly, but the hearts of those who killed him was murder. He, he gave his life willingly for us. And raised from the dead. And as he was leaving, one of the things that he told his disciples was go into the world, preaching the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Baptism, and from that point on, it was recognized as part of the idea of what it meant to be a Christian. If you go through the book of Acts, 
Phrases like repent and be baptized are in there. There are amazing stories of of individuals being baptized, but entire families being baptized. The idea of of coming and, and being identified with Christ through the waters of baptism. And over the last 2,000 plus years, it has continued to be one of the most significant moments in the life of a person of faith. Regardless of what church you may or may not have grown up in, I, there is some form of baptism. Uh, normally when we talk about baptism, churches talk about baptism, and again, even the one I grew up in, um, we discuss the, the really important stuff about baptism, right? Um, we discuss what type of water must be used. You know, we, does it have to be outside? Does it have to be in running water? Can it be in a baptistry? Can it be in a bathtub? Can it be in a swimming pool? Does it have to be a lot of water or a little bit of water? Right? Do you have to dunk somebody for it to really take? Or for a, will a sprinkle work? Does, I don't know. I don't, does the Holy Spirit have enough power to, to really, you know, do, a, do anything with three sprinkles on a head? I don't know. That's, but that's, those are the arguments we have. Right? We discuss infant baptism versus believer baptism. And here at Fellowship of Faith, we do believer baptism. Because we believe it's, a, it's an important step in the, in the faith process. But those are the things that normally focus, that people focus on much, very often when they're talking about baptism. But one of the things we have to realize, and as a result of all this, and of 2,000 years of baptism, and because of, of the way people, some, many of us have, have grown up maybe thinking, uh, having uh, relegating baptism to just something you might do at some point, in your life at some point, you know, when, when you get around to it or because it's been elevated to some other ele- uh, el- uh, level of importance, uh, often we relegate baptism to just a really cool event that hopefully you can invite family members to and you get some pictures and maybe you get a certificate depending on the church you go to. But I want you to realize something this morning. If we are truly going to understand the element of worship of baptism, that baptism is much more than just getting wet. It means much more than just having a bunch of really cool people around who get to share in the event of you getting wet and maybe getting a towel or, or, or something or you know, and having a special prayer prayed over you. It is more than just getting wet because it's not just a thing we do. It's not because we got around, we were thought about it, and Christians thought, they sat around, and they said, okay, we've got to think of something really weird that no one ever does anywhere else that will designate us as Christians. And so what would be a really cool thing? And someone said, I don't know, there's a pond over there, let's go dunk some people in that. That was not the purpose of baptism. It was given to us by Christ. It was told, we were told to do it by Christ. And, and there's a power in the element of baptism. It does not the thing that saves you. The waters of baptism do not, are not sufficient for salvation. But there is a lot that, that tied up in this idea of taking the step of baptism. And baptism is, is, is kind of a weird combination of a lot of things because it's extremely personal. And one of the ways we describe baptism here at Fellowship of Faith, um, when we talk about the, the idea of, of believer baptism, is the idea that when people, we, we compare it to a marriage. When two people come to me to ask to be married, they have already made the commitment to each other to spend the rest of their lives together. But they find it the need, and it is necessary, and, and regardless of all the other garbage that's been discussed about marriage and things like that lately, uh, we believe here that marriage is something ordained by God. And it's got very specific uh, discussion of who can and can't be married and all those types of things. But we believe it is an ordination by God, that he called us to do that. And the reason we have all those ceremonies in place is not because the two people involved have to understand the relationship. It is because 
Moms really want weddings. The real reason for that is this. Two people who have made a commitment decide to have a wedding so that they can stand in front of the entire world and publicly acknowledge the commitment they have made to each other. That they, are, they exchange those vows for the sake of not only, seeing, not only talking to each other and letting them know, but they are standing there proudly to say, this is the person whom I have chosen to walk with through the rest of my life. When we look at baptism, it is equally significant, if not more so, because what it is, it is your personal statement to the world that you have chosen to follow Christ, that you acknowledge that He is your Savior, and that it is a lifetime commitment. It's extremely, extremely personal. It is your identity with Christ. And it's an extremely important step in our faith. There are a lot of people I know, I've met through my life, who would be perfectly content to be ninja Christians. To be followers of Christ and very happy that no one ever knew. But the call of Christ is not a CIA mission. It is a public, very clear statement. It is a very clear walk that we must, we must pursue, we must do in our own lives because we are the ones called to bring others into faith in Christ and baptism is an extremely important part of that worship stead, of that walk. It's an important step because we are making an identification with Christ. It's also a public thing. It's very public. It's a celebration of your faith. I talk to people sometimes who get nervous about baptism because they don't really know what it's going to entail and there's a lot to it and, and, I, and I understand all that and hopefully... I am good at helping them understand and get, and understand uh, what it's going to take, but also um, let them understand and see that it is an exciting, awesome event to be part of a baptism. It is a celebration that nobody in the room is hoping they drown. That everybody there is excited, is celebrating, is, is so happy that they are now identifying with Christ as so many of the people in the room have also done. One of the interesting things is I was studying, um, there are churches, and I, I think that I might even start doing this with our, with our church. Um, it's pretty old school, but I, I, we can do some of that because a lot of it is really good. Um, a lot of churches, when they do a baptism, as they are asking those who are being baptized these questions, they take a next step. They take a next step, and what they do is they have everybody who's ever been baptized stand up, and they ask them very similar questions. The baptism event is public, and so every time we have a baptism, those of us who have identified with Christ publicly once are called to identify with Christ publicly every time we see it to reconfirm that commitment every time. It's a beautiful thing. Because when you start doing that, you identify so much with that person in the water. It becomes a celebration beyond anything that we can manufacture. It becomes a, a, an event in which God comes in. God is the focus. And God takes it to something beyond what we, we can understand. It is a celebration of faith, and it is an introduction into a community of faith. There's a reason that we like doing it here in, in the, our uh, sanctuary on Sunday mornings with everybody gathered around as part of a, a worship service because we want those people who are baptized to understand they are part 
of this community of fellowship. Yes, they're baptized into a greater community of the church, the Big C Church Universal. It doesn't matter like if they're baptized here and they go somewhere else, they are, are still acknowledged as, as children of, of God. But for us, when you are baptized here, you are being inducted, introduced into this community. And that is not only a statement of your faith that you are identifying with this community, but also it is a, a statement of on our part that we are responsible for the development spiritually of the person getting wet that day. Baptism is so much more than getting wet. If you go to Romans 6, There are a few other, there are quite a few other places in the Bible that talk about baptism, and I encourage you, and I say it weekly, um, but I just, uh, trust me on this, if you will get that program, and you will look at those seven ch chapters in the front that are the weekly reading, and you will read one of those a day, many of the things I say on Sunday morning will make a lot more sense. It's also an opportunity for you to check the facts and make sure that I didn't make stuff up. But in there, you're going to see so many other quotes. When we talk about being baptized in the community and, and, and what it means to that, and we were even talking about this, this, this prayer time on, on Wednesday uh, where we're going to be sharing with other churches and, and, and places in, in Scripture where it talks about when you're baptized, you're, you're baptized into the body of Christ. You're baptized in the body. You become an integral part of that body. That one baptism. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Well then, should we keep on sinning so God can show us more and more kindness and forgiveness? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Have you forgotten that when we became Christians and were baptized to become one with Christ, we died with Him? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with Him in His death, we also will be raised as He was. Our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also share His new life. I realize the phrase baptism is only used one time. But if we are going to understand the importance of getting wet in baptism, we must understand the significance of this passage. Now, I realize we come in halfway through a conversation because Paul has apparently been explaining something because he says, so does that mean we can sin all we want so that grace may abound? And he says, of course not. And he's, the translators are being polite when they translate it, of course not. Paul's statement would have been much more harsh than that. But when we look at, ba at baptism, we must understand, traditionally, it's, uh, there's uh, been this idea, one of the reasons that so many of the churches, so many churches require that getting under the water and coming out. And one of the, it's, it's such an important part of, of what people think of when they think of baptism is because of the symbolism of dying and being brought back to life. You've been, you've been died with Christ. It's not only identifying you with His own death and resurrection, it's identifying you with your death and new life. It is a symbol of your death to sin and your new life in Christ. It's a symbol of Christ's resurrection and it's a, it's a symbol of your resurrection. It's a symbol of you being empowered to live differently. Because the reality of the salvation that Christ offered you and that you have accepted has given you the opportunity to live differently. I talked to you guys a couple weeks ago about some conversations that, that Craig, and, Craig Sanders and I have 
uh, about a lot of different things. And, and we've had a lot over the last few years because he was on staff for a while, but also we're, we're, we just we talk. And when we talk for five minutes, it t- turns into two hours usually. We talked about the significance of baptism stuff and, and the fact that so often people will just want to be baptized because it's a thing to do. Because they knew someone else was getting baptized or because someone told them they should be baptized and, and, and they think it's just, it, it's a really cool thing. Or, you know, if you're dealing with young people, you know, like, like Craig has done with youth, or if you've ever been at a camp meeting, if you baptize one kid, you're going to baptize 50 kids because that's kind of the way it works. And, and honestly, with adults, it works the same way sometimes. And, beca- and it becomes an overwhelming event, just like we're doing this thing. But what we need to realize, remember, and always remember because of the waters of our baptism, remember that event that we were not only identified with Christ, not only were we identified with a specific community of faith, but, but we, have been, we have died to our old selves and we have been raised to something new. That is an exciting place to be. That is an exciting truth that we must all grasp a hold of. I hope that there's no one who ever gets baptized here at Fellowship of Faith that does not understand the significance of the symbolism of that baptism, but also understand the celebration involved in, under, in, in, this, in this moment at which you are publicly saying, God did something inside of me that is different. He has changed me. I was a slave to sin. I was a slave to the way things used to be. I was in, in pain because of the disgrace and the shame of sin. And I came into, Christ, into contact with Jesus. And as these waters, as water is used to wash the clothes, my life has been cleansed by the power of Christ and His blood. Baptism is so much more than getting wet. Now, one of the requirements, one of the things we need to realize, and one of the reasons that, that Craig and I have had these conversations, and not just him, I've had it with other pastors, is that we don't baptize you unless you have placed your faith in Christ. That's an important first step of placing your faith in Christ. Starting that relationship, making that commitment, experiencing that change. It's, it's, it's vitally important. And you have to, every person who places their faith in Christ has to ask these questions that I just asked before baptism. Do you renounce sin? Do you renounce Satan? Do you renounce the old life for the sake of accepting Christ and the new life he offers? There's a reason it's significant that, that there's a sequence the way it is. Do you renounce this and accept this and then do you promise to follow Him and obey Him? We cannot. We cannot ever understand the significance of the baptism, that, of, the, of the event of baptism if we have not first gone through the work of abandoning the life we've lived and accepting the new life in Christ and allowing Him to change us. Because otherwise, you can be baptized every day for the rest of your life, and basically, you're going swimming. But place your faith in Christ. Experience that new life. Do it. Today is the day. If you've never experienced Christ, the, the salvation of Christ before, today is the day of your salvation. Freely offered to you by the grace of Jesus Christ. Place your faith in Him. And I, I realize there, there are churches that, that don't focus on this, but I, I, there is a significance that is important that you take the next step of being baptized. It's important. It's vitally, it's, it's an important step for all the reasons I described. Do it publicly, do it communally. 
do it obediently because of everything else. And this is, un- unfortunately, this gets reduced to the reason we do it very often. Well, Jesus said we have to. So, therefore, we should be baptized. Now, I realize Jesus telling you to do something should be enough. As someone who has followed Christ, Jesus saying, this is what you must do, is enough. But, if we understand the significance of all of the things that we've discussed, as far as it being a, a personal identity and a public identity and all and, and being a, a symbol of our death and resurrection in Christ, all of those things, we will want to be a part of that baptism. It becomes a critical part of our development. If you fl- place your faith in Christ and you want a community to come around you and help you in your spiritual development to understand what it means to follow and obey God, be baptized. And allow that community to come around you and do those things. It's extremely important. And then I, uh, we're talking about worship throughout this entire month. And it's not just a matter of me trying to get some baptisms because Fifth Sunday's coming up. And we like to do baptism on Fifth Sunday. But it's more than that. Because everything we're talking about as far as worship is concerned, not only is it our focus on, on understanding more why we do things here, but the significance of the baptism is this. When you experience the life-changing uh, uh, power of Jesus Christ, you will live your baptism daily in your walk. You will daily look at these questions and ask them of yourself and answer them, yes. You will daily decide that your new life is way better than the old. You will daily live in the public identification with Christ that you are a follower. And as a result, you must go and spread the message of Jesus Christ. Baptism is way more than getting wet. And it always, always calls us back to focusing on God. Baptism is nothing without Jesus. And the the event of baptism and everything that happens from that moment on should always call us to be a reminder to to remember who it is who not only allowed us to be baptized, but who it is who, who brought forth that salvation. It's not by works of righteousness or good things that we have done. It's according to God's mercy that He has saved us. It's not because a pastor spoke some words over you and sprinkled, poured, or dunked you, or as in the case of Fellowship of Faith, all three, and then put a a cross on your head and prayed over you that you are saved. It is according to the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died and rose so that we may also die to a life of sin and raise new in a life of righteousness. Live your baptism every day. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep them the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach to them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized in the death of Jesus, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen.